Hey there, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I am going to share a tutorial with you showing how to make a gift bag like this. I do have a previous video that I will link below and also up in the top corner showing how I put this bag together along with a little handmade card to go along with this gift bag and this tag as well. So if you'd like to check that video out, please do. Like I said, I'll link it below. But I thought for those of you who do not have a Silhouette Cameo or choose not to use an electronic die cut machine because that's what I use to cut this. It's a Lori Whitlock SVG file. I did change the size of it than how you purchase it, but um, to make it a little bit larger. But I will also link that below in case you choose to just have your die cutting machine cut it out. But for those of you who choose not to use one or don't have one, I thought I would show you how you can make a bag similar to this one. This bag measures seven and a half inches tall by six and a half by four inches. So I thought we would go over today on how to do this. This is holding some homemade caramel popcorn. And I have a little bow here with a pearl to the center. So let me set this aside and show you some of the items that we will be using. For that bag that I just shared with you, I'm using Pink Paisley's Snow Village. You want to use a thick enough paper. It, you don't want to use copy paper or copy weight paper rather because it'd be too thin, it wouldn't hold up. You wanna use something thick enough but not too thick that it's going to crack either. So for that bag I used Pink Paisley Snow Village. For the one today I'm using the Jen Hadfield DIY Home. I got this at Tuesday morning. I picked out these two pieces, I thought those would look cute for a bag. I'm also gonna be using some glitter paper that I absolutely love. I get this from Amazon. I will try to link that below. And a um, bone folder, some scissors. I'm also going to be using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. I like using a wet glue for this because it gives you time to maneuver the pieces together, but you can use double-sided tape if you choose. So here are all the measurements if you wanted to pause the screen and screenshot these or write them down. I'll go ahead and go over these with you as we go. Um, for these pieces, I did use my silhouette to cut them out just because it's super quick, but I'm going to give you the measurements without using an electronic die cut machine like I mentioned. And you can use just a border edge punch for these if you'd like. So the first thing we're going to do is score our paper. And again, we have two pieces of paper. These are going to be cut to 10 and 7 eighths of an inch by 11 and 1 eighths of an inch. We need two of them. And on the 10 and 7 8 inch side, you want to be aware of how you cut your paper if you have a directional pattern paper. Like this one, it doesn't matter, but if you had something with Christmas trees or something like that, you want to make sure that the, the tall side of the box is going to be the 11 and 1 8 And it's going to be 10 and 7 8 wide. So on the 10 and 7 8 inch side, we're going to score at 5 8 of an inch, 7 inch, and 9 inches. Okay, so 5 8 is going to be that tick mark right after the half inch. Go ahead and score that. 7 inches and 9 inches. We're going to rotate that 90 degrees. So now we're on the 11 and 1 8 inch side. 
And on this side, we're going to score at five and three quarters and seven and a half. So make sure it's butted up in the corner there. Score it at five and three quarters, seven and a half. Okay, so we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, putting our paper in at the 10 and 7 eighths inch side, we're going to score at 5 eighths, 7 inches, 9 inches, rotate at 90 degrees, and on the 11 and 1 eighth inch side, we're going to score at 5 and 3 quarters, and seven and a half. Okay, we can put our scoreboard away for now. The next thing we want to do is cut out a tab, and this is what we're going to be gluing to each other. So the first score line where we scored it at five eighths of an inch, okay, that's going to be our first score mark, five eighths of an inch. Then we have these two score marks. Hopefully you'll be able to see these. We're going to cut up to that first score mark, okay? Let me cut it and show you. And we're gonna cut it at a slight angle as well. So I'm gonna follow this score mark up to the first score mark. And I'm going to go ahead and angle that and give that a cut. That's going to leave us, let me cut it a little bit better here. Okay. That's going to leave us with one tab. So again, we have a score mark here and a score mark here. We cut up to the first score mark. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and cut out on this second score mark, so we have our tab piece right here, then our second score mark up to the first line, we wanna go ahead and cut that out at an angle. This is going to eliminate some of the bulk when we fold our bag. Okay. And lastly, we just wanna take a little bit off this side up to that first score mark. Again, this is going to alleviate some of the bulk. So here is what we are left with. Okay, so we cut up to that very first score line. We're going to do the exact same thing on this one. Again, cutting up to the first score line and giving it an angle here. Just use that score guide, that score line as your guide. And now we're going to move over to the next score line. And we're just going to angle this end. I think it's easier starting from that bottom score line. I think it's easier to just go like this, this way. Okay, so now we have two identical pieces. We're going to go ahead and fold on all our score lines, just giving them a nice crease. And you wanna fold into that score line, so into the bum. I'm gonna go ahead and press that down with my bone folder. Okay, so we're gonna do all those score lines and then we're gonna go and do the other ones. And do that with the other side as well. So we're going to have two matching pieces here. This is one side of the box and the other piece of paper is going to be the other side of our, our bag rather. Fold up. And 
And one more crease. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is put our tab pieces, both the tab pieces on the right, on the right side. So here's my tab on this one, and here's my tab piece on this one. We're going to adhere the, the tab from this left piece of paper onto this piece of paper on the right. So what I like to do is just fold that over, add my wet glue. I'm going to add glue to the entire tab piece so I can make sure it's adhered down well. You can use score tape or your tape runner, but I think that the wet glue really is easiest to work with. So I'm just gonna bump those up next to each other, line them up and fold this down. Okay, and give that a good press. Let me make sure it looks lined up here. If it's if it looks off a little, just adjust it. And that's the, the beauty of the wet glue. You can move it around as you need to. Okay, I'm gonna use my bone folder and really press that down. The next thing we want to do is fold this tab over and take our entire piece. See if I can get that all in frame here. Take our entire piece and fold it in half. And that should line up fairly close to this side. So again, I'm going to add my wet glue to this entire tab. Fold this over and just line it up. I'm actually going to pick it up to do it. Make sure that the top is lined up well. Make sure to check both sides and just really press that down. So here is the beginning of our box. Here is the bottom flap. And the purpose of these score marks here is so you can pinch in your box and the same thing, you can pinch it in down here. You can choose not to do that score mark if you want, but it does look cute. So I'm going to go ahead and add glue to all of these tabs so we can set this aside to dry. I do like to make sure I get to the edges here. I'm going to go ahead and put one side down. And then I'll add glue to this last piece here. Once I glue this down, I'll, I'll kind of adjust it to make sure it's all lined up well. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to just kind of press inside with my bone folder. Make sure that's pressed down very well. Okay, so the next piece that we have, this is the inside bottom piece. I cut out a piece of chipboard that is six and one eighth inch by three and three fourths inch. I also cut out a piece of pattern paper that's the exact same size, six and one eighth by three and three fourths. I've already adhered that out, that piece of paper down, and I'm going to add 
glue to the back of this and we're going to use this in the bottom of our bag. This is going to give our bag stability and a little bit of weight to it which will help make it a little bit more stable. This piece of paper is from the Pink Paisley Snow Village collection. So I'm just going to drop that in there and press that down. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Here are the other pieces. This piece is going to go on this side and the other side. So these are cut to, I have two of them, cut to six and a quarter by one and three quarters of an inch. Six and a quarter, one and three quarters. Again, you can use a decorative edge punch if you want. Then I have two side pieces. These are cut to three and seven eighths of an inch by one and three fourths of an inch. I did choose to back all of these with some craft cardstock just to reinforce it. If you're using a thick enough paper, you don't have to do that, but I think it does help with it. So I, I did all of them except this one just to show you. So I just simply added the glue to it, backed it on a piece of craft cardstock. You can add whatever cardstock you want behind it because you won't see that. Or you can make a larger mat like I did on this one. I have slightly, you can see it there is a little bit of a green mat matching this paper collection. So you would just cut those a little, like maybe a quarter inch larger. Also, I want to mention for the holes on these, from the top, you want to go down about seven eighths of an inch. Use maybe a quarter inch hole punch. So from the top, about seven eighths inch down. And from the left, go over about one and a half and four and three quarters. So again, seven and an eighth one and a half from the left side and then four and three quarters from the left side and you can hole punch that. Lastly, I do have some reinforcements that I want to put in the side of my bag. My bag started to crack on the other one so I decided to add a reinforcement. I'm using some thick cardstock that I did double. I left one just to glue on camera to show you and these two pieces there's two of them that are cut to three and three quarters inch by two inches. And I glued two of them together just to really give it some strength. And this is a 110 pound cardstock here and I used two of them. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do, let's set all of that aside. Let's take our two pieces and glue them to the top here. I will go back and add some more holes to my bag itself using my crop -a dial I'm going to go ahead and add my wet glue to the entire piece. You can also cut out some pieces for the inside if you wanted to put some pattern paper on the entire inside. I figured you wouldn't really see that, so I didn't want to do the extra work of that. Okay, so I did this side. I'm going to go ahead and do this side now. Okay, I'm just butting that up towards the top, pressing that down. I'm going to go ahead and do the side pieces. So the side pieces are the same height, but again, these side pieces are three and seven eighths by one and three fourths of an inch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my reinforcements to these sides. I'm just gonna put these right in at the top. I'm gonna to do this opposite one because it's easier for me to see. And just butt it right up against the top. You will hardly notice that it is there, but yet it gives it a lot of stability. Now, by putting these pieces in, you cannot fold it 
but that's okay. I didn't need mine folded. But if you do, you don't want to put these reinforcement pieces if you want to pinch your bag. Turn that the other way and just put that right up at the top there. So here we have our box. Next thing I want to do is grab my crop a dial and just cut those holes. Okay, so I'm just going to use my crop dial and punch through the bag. You can also add some reinforcements behind this as well if you wanted to make it a little bit sturdier. I didn't think it was necessary for what I'm putting in here. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the satin ribbon that I had in my stash, silver. Let's see if it... And I'm going to go ahead and grab probably about 18 inches long. This may be a little too long. You might be able to get away with a little bit less, but we'll see. And I'm just going to go ahead and feed that in from the front, pull that through, and then I'm going to go ahead and knot it. I'm going to put two knots in it, leaving myself just a tiny little tail here. And you want to do two so it's thick, thick enough to not come back through. You can adjust this depending on how much of a handle you want or need. I think, I think I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter, so maybe about an inch off of it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to knot it. Yeah, that's perfect. So maybe cut yours to about 17 if, if that looks good to you. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the Fabri-Tac underneath my knot in here to attach these pieces down. That's just going to help them stay out of the way. ahead and do the same to the other side and I thought we would add a cute little tag this I just printed out from my printer added it on a scallop border and put my name on the back my husband's name on the back I think for this I'm going to add a little bow I have a bow cut out from the same silver glitter paper that I used a La La Land craft die. So I'm going to add that down here. And I'm going to go ahead and hold that down for a minute. And I have a white enamel dot I'm going to add to the center here. Okay, and while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and I think tie on this. I have just a little scrap piece of satin ribbon. 
I'm gonna just tie a little bow here. So I thought I would add jingle bells to this. I think that's gonna look cute. But I also wanted to share with you today, I'm gonna share my recipe for the caramel popcorn. I will also put this up on my blog. So if you want to stop by my blog, it's at Corrine's Creations at Blogspot. But here, I'm gonna put it here in case you want to pause the video and take a screenshot of it super easy and it turns out very well so i'm just going to use some of the same baker's twine I thought jingle bells on this would be adorable. I'm gonna go back to the other gift bags that I made and add them on there as well. So when I'm working with jingle bells, I like to tie them first before doing anything because I've had them escape way too many times. So if you just put a little knot in it first, that's going to be helpful if you're going to put a bow in your twine. I love the addition to that. Here is another one that I have made. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'll just cut off the excess on this and look how super cute that is. That makes that look. And here are two other really quick wrapping of the popcorn. I put little jingle bells on those as well, along with another one of the tags. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to make your own gift bags. Head to my Instagram and blog for more photos and the recipe card. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.